Hi, welcome back to Cubs and Culture for January 7th, 2018. We're continuing the necessary work of talking about the offseason. Okay, so this offseason has been absolute hell for me because of the way in which the market has been completely stalled the entire time. There's still, like, the bulk of free agent signings and or trades are going to happen, and we're less than 40 days away from the start of spring training. Um, hopefully, it will end up just being, like, all in one day. Okay, so sort of the main storylines culturally is about, um, or why the market has been stalled, is next year's free agent class is absolutely insane. It has, like... For, like, the top tier, Bryce Harper, Manny Machado, Cle- um, Clayton Kershaw, uh, several other, Mike, I think my, even Mike Trout could possibly opt out. So, like, it's all, like, the biggest names in the sport. Like, you got, like, 30 guys who are all superstars, or um, some of which are generational talents. Bryce Harper, Mike Trout. Manny Machado and Clayton Kershaw, especially, are generational um, talents. They're all up for free agency next year. And last year, or this year, a new penalty for a luxury tax threshold was in, instituted. Um, there's no salary cap in baseball, but what it is, if you're like the Do- um, Dodgers or the Yankees, and you just spend over, I think it's $225 million on your payroll... Year in, year out, um, the Dodgers spend $300, $300 million on payroll. It's somewhat ridiculous. It's too much resources in baseball. Um, you lose draft picks. You ha- you you end up getting laid around. You have less international money. There's a whole series of penalties. And the long, more years you spend over the threshold, the more severe the penalties get. Okay. So it acts something as a soft tack. It acts as something like a soft salary cap. So that's slowing down the entire um, market be, um, for this free agency class because all the teams are trying to save money for next year. So, yay. So next year is also going to be really slow and um, horrible. Then um, the other thing that really stole the market is there was two trading situations which involved two very good players. The first one is um, Otani from Japan. He was posted by his Japanese team, which means it's um, the Japanese team is paid a fee and they get to trade him to a whatever team he wishes to sign with. Otani is, he's described as the Babe Ruth of Japan. He's been a um, designated hitter and pitcher. Or on days that he pitches, he doesn't use. They don't use the designated hitter. Um, in Japan, he in one of his season, he's like a th- two seventy five hitter, but with like thirty home runs, etc. He's won awards as both pitcher, like the ERA t- title, um, in the Japanese leagues, or um, like the, silver, the equivalent to the Silver Slugger as a designated hitter. So he's a, he's he's that he's that rare commodity, a rare player. That the only other um, reference point in history is Babe Ruth, who happens to be a really good hit um, position, a really good hitter, and a really good um, pitcher. Uh, it turns out he also has might have an issue with his elbow, so that's why he's coming over now. Anyway, so this delayed the entire any team looking for pitching was interested in him. So anyone, so a whole bunch of teams held off on their plans to get him for his pit um for pitching so he ended up going to the angels which i find hysterical because the angels probably still won't make the postseason and they probably have the two best players in mike drought and otani now um for their you know combination anyway two generational talents and they still can't make the postseason anyway the other thing Okay, the other thing that held up the market, and I apologize for the technical difficulties, is the master, the Mar- Marlins are constantly badly, badly run on all single fronts. They've, I think they have like six lawsuits currently going against them. So anyway, um, Derek Jeter 
and with a group of other people, including Michael Jordan, ended up buying the Marlins, and they're trying to salvage the situation, and so they had to shred payroll. And uh, they're doing this by trading um, Stanton, Giancarlo Stanton, who won MVP, he hit 59 home runs, blah, blah, blah. His contract is absolutely terrible um, from a business perspective. It's like 10 years, which is really long in baseball, for nearly $300 million. So they had to move it. And and this is what I really want to talk about. Um, people, if you, if you don't follow baseball a lot, you think, you think, why do people hate the Yankees? Or why are they referred to as the evil empire? It's because of stuff like this. Derek Jeter, um, and say they ended up going to the Yankees on a very sweetheart deal for the Yankees. They got like $30 million. Um, um, they only had to trade in, um, uh, uh, middling uh, prospects and infielders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, because of that, um, it feels like Cheater bought the Marlins only to give the Yankees their best player, which is utterly unfair, and stuff like that sticks in their claw uh, if you're not a Yankee fan. Fortunately, the Astros ruined Cheater's re- number retirement ceremony by kicking the ass of the Yankees that day. They were up by like six points in the first inning. It was great. Um, Astros were doing the Lord's work last year by putting um, big market teams in their place. So let me pause right there. I'm getting a little bit ranty. Um, See you in a bit.